the other. Um, I had a patient the other day say to me, hey, until I read your blog, I didn't know that I needed to wait a full minute between puffs of my rescue inhaler, and I was like, like, not that it's a dull moment, but it's like, you know what, I probably bombarded this lady with information that first day, and that was just one of those things that escaped. She probably has utilized all, all kinds of other information I've given her, but that one little piece didn't sink for some reason. I'm glad it finally did. She read a, read a blog I read or wrote and um, and is able to utilize that that piece of education and for for her own benefit. But you know sometimes it's a lot of information. So this is kind of your one stop shop for pulmonary rehab education. And then I try to add some fun things in there every now and again and stuff that interests me too. Um, and so that's why I created it. Um, the wait times to start pulmonary rehab, patient education, motivation. I want to inspire, um, start inspire people, inspire people to move, to be fit, um, to do the best for their health and wellness. Um, you know, one of the things I talk about the first or second day of pulmonary rehab, I'm like, why? What is your goal for pulmonary rehab? And some folks say, you know. I want to breathe better. And I'm like, well, we all want to breathe better. I want to be skinny. Everybody knows, but what is going to get you into the gym and inspire you to um, keep going? Is it, you know, a, a daughter's wedding? Is it a grandchild on the way? Um, what is your motivation for improving your quality of life and getting you going? Um, so some of that. And then to, eventually I want to create a community like you all have here. The support is everything. Um, until I started Relive Fit, I didn't know how much online support there are, uh, mostly through social media like Facebook and things like that. Um, but I didn't realize with all the foundations that they also have community forums and things like that where there is interaction there and education. So I'm learning a lot doing this, um, but I think the community aspect is just that is just so important with. Um, with the blog, and hopefully that will be coming soon. Originally, um, I was worried about starting like a forum on the website itself because this blog is a huge reflection of me. You know, this was something I put together, I created, and I think I was initially very nervous when I hit that publish button the first time. I was like, oh, I was just worried about how it would come off and what how it would reflect on me. And so then I worried about, well, if people are, if there's a lot of chatter on my website, how do I keep it positive and uplifting and motivational? And how do we stay away from, you know, negative folks or negative thinking? Mm -hmm. and, um, and I don't think that they've got that 100% figured out on the support group sites online either. Because um, I know it, it would play hard in my brain if I was seeing a lot of sad, negative things. Yes, I know it can be an aspect of having a lung condition and things are difficult. But well, where am I going to get go to be inspired, to be uplifted? Um, so I kind of need to figure out how I'm going to work the community thing, whether it be like a question answer, like I love how they do it on the COPD Foundation, where it's, it puts kind of a question and then they kind of go back and forth and answer it from a patient standpoint, how I would do it. But that's in the works as well. Okay, so when you sign on to www.breathelivefit.com, uh, this is your first page. Um, I tell a little bit about why I created this blog. Uh, there is a big, giant blue arrow there because that subscribe button uh, subscribes just to an email. Every time I post content, it'll shoot the person an email letting them know that I've got a new article posted on Breathlifted. Um, I tell people, when you subscribe to Breathlifted, I'm not going to spam your inbox. I am not, I have not made any money off of this. This is not like my money maker, it's not my bread and butter. This is all for the patient. This is all my time going to the blog. So I'm not going to send you advertisements for the latest CPAP headgear or whatever. Um, and so you will just be notified. And so if you're not 
a so social media person, if you could care less about Facebook and Instagram, um, then it's going to be hard to know when I post something new. And so that subscribe uh, button will at least get you one email to your inbox letting you know when I've got something new. Unless you know the kind of person that will check it weekly, um, that's the way to get notified for new stuff posted. Um, then there's a, a, a tab on the top that says about, and that's all about me and stuff I went over this earlier about me. Then there is another tab at the top about resources, and then I've tried to go in and list um, at the time as many foundations as I could kind of think of as another um, area to access information on the lung condition. There's probably more I need to add, um, but in, this was my initial um, my initial attempt at making sure that I was adding um, links for the foundations as well. This next tab is my shop site. When we were coming up with the idea of Breathe, Live, Fit, um, we were thinking, is this going to be, well, first of all, is this going to be a local thing or is this going to be a national thing? Like, I guess when, when I was thinking, like, the internet, I guess I didn't think about um, that people in the UK and Australia are going to be reading my content. And so I see it on a little map, these little little pings come up um, when they're analyzing who's reading um, the articles. So we put the logo on a few items that are through like a cafe press through a logo, I guess, site. Um, mainly my, my parents wanted to market it and buy mugs and things like that. So if you click through to shop the site, it does go to support the website only. Like I say, it, it would be, it's gonna take a very long time if I were to ever make an, an income off of this. Mainly any, in, any income that I get, um, and I can talk about that more in a bit, would go to support um, the site itself, because right now that's completely out of pocket. Okay, and now for why I'm here, um, the blog itself. Um, <laughs> When we were talking about names for the blog, I re my sister actually suggested this name, Fit, and the fact that I could categorize the topics I wanted to cover under those three topics. Um, and so when you first click on the top where it says blog up there, um, it'll take you to a page where all my posts are there. And I've been doing this since, um, September 20th, I think, was my launch date. And so I posted a new article every single week since September 20th. Um, and so there's about 20 some articles up there. And so those will all be listed with a, this is what we call a blog banner. Um, and you can click on that to then read the article. However, if you're like, well, that's a lot of posts, Christina, and I'm really only looking for information on how to get stronger, then you would click on fit and it would list all of my posts on exercise or live is living with lung conditions and uh, breathe is obviously helping you to breathe better. So let's move on. So breathe, these are a couple of blogs that I've done on breathe, although when I first made this PowerPoint, it was for the January meeting. We had that snow and ice, so I had some I had some new ones up there as well. But these are the ones I had done as of January: breathing techniques, covering first lip breathing, diaphragmatic breathing, things of that nature. Top ten warning signs that you need to see a doctor, um, and that is really just kind of a, a, a easy access um, that if you have any of those signs, then you need to see the physician. So that was a high a top reader. Um, all you ever wanted to know about pulse oximetry, um, so all about pulse oxes. Under the live tab, I have this 15 holiday tips for the loved ones of people with lung conditions. That is like my all time highest um, blog post. I've had close to, I want to say like 13 or 1400 people read that article. And I have to give my husband um, some props because he's like, you know, you did. I did one at Thanksgiving about how to make Thanksgiving easier, breathing easier during Thanksgiving or something like that. Um, and then as um, 
coming up with ideas. I have a little list on my phone. My husband's like, you need to do one for the loved ones. And I was like, for the loved ones? Really? And he's like, Christina, I'm telling you, a lot of people just want their family to know how it is, <laughs> like what's going to help them and things of that nature. Um, you'll be surprised how many people read that. And I was like, oh, uh, if you're sure, okay, I can come up with some, some things. Apparently, I come up with at least 15 things. Uh, that, that loved ones should know about how to help someone with a lung condition. And those, top, those um, things can be used all year long. Um, and so it can really be adapted to any kind of holiday. But I did do that around Christmas time. And I was very surprised, even though my husband pat himself on the back. <laughs> he thought it was going to be great from the start. I was like, well, okay, I'll do it. And people liked it and shared it through social media and sent it through email. Um, to other folks, and uh, so it ended up being the number one uh, article I've done so far, which is pretty cool. Um, emergency preparedness for snowstorms, also a big read, um, it, especially people in the south, it puts us in a tizzy, and I'm one of those people. So I start seeing some flakes in the air, I'm, I'm heading back to my house, um, and I'm, I'm the girl at the grocery store getting bread, eggs, and milk. Yeah, that's me. I'll probably get three gallons. Yeah, as if I'm going to be stuck there for weeks. That's me. Um, so I, was, I cover how to prepare for a snowstorm. If anybody knows how to do it, it's this girl right here who gets really stuck about snow. As a, as a Southern Virginia Belle here, I don't handle snow well. And then um, in New, New Year's, I did uh, what I called um, the New Year's promise, like promises you make to yourself, not just resolutions. And these things were all very uh, doable things. This isn't like lose 40 pounds. This is like make subtle changes and topics in which you could do that for the New Year. So that did pretty well, too. Um, but what I'm finding is, is that other than the 15 holiday tips and some other hot topics like weather, um, most of the people love the fitness stuff. And I just wasn't, I thought it would be an aspect because I think most people are working out on their own and not in pulmonary rehab. But I didn't know that that would be the big draw for this blog. And so a lot of folks have been coming to, to get arm strengthening. I just did one a couple of weeks ago on leg strengthening exercises and that did really, really well. I liked this, the absolutely great exercises. That was at exercises you could do standing or sitting, so not laying yourself down on the floor and trying to do some crunches.